Good evening and welcome to this Christmas Eve service. Uh, since our churches are locked down yet again, um, many are still not open. So this is just something to keep you focused on the faith at this somewhat lonely Christmas Eve. I uh, hope you have a nice Christmas day and Boxing Day and then we're locked down again. So uh, be encouraged though. The end is in sight. Let's reflect on Christmas as we read from God's Word. It's a reading from the book of Malachi. All the troubles in the world that the Lord Jesus Christ uh, came to address, if we'll only accept him as Saviour, uh, are still with us. And although many have accepted him as Saviour, Many world leaders still have not and have no time for the baby in the manger. So let's begin by reading the book of Malachi. It's good news, the Lord Jesus Christ coming into this world. But uh, in the book of Malachi, the last book before the New Testament, uh, Malachi looks ahead to the coming of a saviour. A redeemer. He doesn't know for sure what shape or form God will send his miracle in, but here's his words. Let's hear the word of God. <clears throat> Malachi chapter 4. For behold, the day is coming, burning like a furnace, and all the arrogant and every evildoer will be chaff, and the day is coming that will set them ablaze says the Lord of armies, so that it will leave them neither root nor branches. But for you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in its wings, and you will go forth and frolic like calves from the stall, and you will crush the wicked underfoot, for there will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day that I am preparing says the Lord of hosts. So there's changes in Malachi's world up ahead and uh, the promise of a judge and a saviour. Before we dive into our reflection, I'm going to read again from the Gospels this time, from the Gospel of Luke, the story of the priest Simeon. It's in Luke chapter 2, reading from verse 25 to 35. Again, let's hear the word of God. And there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, looking for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple and when the parents brought in the Christ Je the child Jesus to carry him out for the custom of the law then he took him into his arms and blessed God and said now Lord you're releasing your bond servant to depart in peace according to your word for my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light of revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And his father and mother were amazed at the things which were being said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rise of many in Israel and for a sign to be opposed and a sword will pierce even your own soul to the end that thoughts from many hearts will be revealed. Amen. May God bless this reading of his word. Sure enough, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ into our world does reveal the thoughts of many hearts. And uh, here we are on Christmas Eve again and in the year gone past, some people have come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's exciting. And some people have developed 
matured in their faith and some people are still very cautious or won't believe in the scriptures and the word of God and the good news of Christmas, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is part one of a two-part uh, talk on Christmas and the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ into our world. The babe in the manger, God incarnate. We see God in the world, isn't that fantastic? We see God but in the form of a little baby and as he grows up in the form of a young man and as he matures in the form of a prophet, a messenger and indeed the very Son of God. What an amazing thing. 2,000 years later, and it doesn't seem like more than a few days, the reality of God in the world. God gave the gift at Christmas of his Son, the Redeemer of all mankind, the Saviour. And today, at this Christmas Eve, we are prepared tomorrow to give gifts to one another. The whole world celebrates the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, although half the people in the world who celebrate Christmas don't know why they're giving gifts. They've not traced it back or they don't have what they would like to call a religious Christmas. They have a Santa Claus kind of Christmas. They have a family time and uh, we need to reach out and encourage people to come to know the Son, the babe in the manger, the Lord Jesus Christ. It's surely a fantastic uh, reason to celebrate and December's a good time to honour God for his greatest gift but perhaps you know of the many who avoid any mention of Jesus at Christmas time and it's difficult to share the faith with them, to share the good news but uh, we just need to be bold, we need to be tactful, we need to be careful, we need to try to bring that message and make it a living reality because it's good news and it's a fantastic message and it's a positive message. Think of, uh, the, day, think of the days when you didn't know about Jesus and the real meaning of Christmas, how dull and empty life was without Jesus in your life. Let's bring some life to our friends, neighbours and relations who don't know Jesus. Perhaps you and other Christians have tried to share with friends and neighbours some Bible readings over the years, maybe even a reading from Luke's Gospel. Uh, maybe that reading too where the old priest Simeon says, Behold, the child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel. Well, if these friends and neighbours don't come to know Jesus, that will be a great fall one day. And for us who have learned about and responded and accepted Jesus, this is the rising of many. And that many have risen from every nation all over the world, whether it's China, uh, whether it's Romania, whether it's uh, Afghanistan, whether it's Iran or Iraq or uh, wherever, every nation in the world has its Christians, some of whom must stay hidden in underground churches, uh, keeping out of sight of the authorities, finding it difficult to meet together. And uh, many leaders have not yet accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as the inspiration for the leadership of their nations, for the direction that they want to, the, the, their nation to, to grow in. So the struggle continues and uh, the thoughts of many hearts are revealed when you bring Jesus Christ into the conversation. When Jesus died 2,000 years ago, Simeon's prophecy came true. And today some of our dear friends and neighbours are either preparing for a religious, uh, a Christ-focused uh, Christmas 
or they're opposed to it and only have Santa or uh, family time at Christmas. So Jesus, of course, we know that he grew to be a man and uh, he went about teaching as a prophet uh, and he took our sins, he, he lifted the curse that we were under from Eden, the Garden of Eden, when God's curse came upon the whole of the human race. And through Christ that curse is lifted and we have fellowship with God because of the name Jesus Christ. Because we believe in Jesus, not because we're perfect people, uh, but Jesus has made us so much better. And we're still growing and developing and one day we'll be everything that Jesus wants us to be. And people all over the world are singing these praises, uh, singing uh, free from the law, oh happy condition, Jesus has bled and there is remission. Bruised by the fall and cursed by the law, but grace has redeemed us once and for all. What a song, what a message. And we sing it in so many different hymns and carols and psalms. And we understand these things. And we feel the power of the Lord Jesus Christ working in our lives. And we see this at work as well in the, in the book of uh, Paul's letter to the Galatians. Where he says that uh, he, he took uh, the manner, uh, what, what, well, what kind of love the Father has bestowed upon us. It says in, in um, 1 John in chapter 3 and verse 1, what manner of love, what kind of love he's given his son, his only son, that we can experience this freedom from judgment, from uh, God's wrath, a way out from the curse. And surely that's good news. So why aren't people excited about this? Why don't they understand this? Well, they're still blinded by the, the dazzling lights of this world, by shallow and temporary things, and they're not looking ahead uh, to where their lives are going. Because uh, someday... Uh, they have to f appear before the Lord. Uh, we all live and we all die. And uh, they have to understand that there will be a judgment. That this is a world of good and evil. And uh, everyone should prepare to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. Not as a babe in the manger, but this time as uh, judge of the whole world and we need to prepare people for that. A great sign appeared in the sky all these years ago before Christ was born leading the wise men to Bethlehem and that same sign the star was seen or something like it I better say was seen in the sky just the other night there. And if you look out your doors, if it's a cloudless night, you'll see again what could be the star of Bethlehem. And many astrologers now believe that uh, the star of Bethlehem was two planets, or maybe even three planets, moving into line so that instead of two or three separate lights in the sky, it became one big light and uh, these planets are Jupiter and Saturn and if you look outside you can see them coming together again looking just like one big bright star and uh, this is an amazing sign again because Jesus said before he comes again there will be his sign in the sky, in the heavens. And we weren't sure, we're not sure, is it the star? Is it the cross? Is it the sign where he rose again with his thousands of angels? 
that after the resurrection. We're, we're not sure. But here's a sign, and it's in the sky again tonight. And it will be for the next few nights as Jupiter and Saturn come together. And those as astrologers who can, um, sorry, astronomers, who can wind back with their computer systems, wind back the motions of the whole universe, can see the patterns of the stars as they were over 2,000 years ago. And uh, they believe that Saturn and um, Jupiter came together then with possibly with Venus as well, a third light for the wise men to follow. Isn't that exciting? And uh, the Jews knew about this star, they knew it was a sign from God, but they didn't rush out and meet and greet the baby Jesus with their gifts. And uh, even the Romans, Herod, came to know about this star, it was so obvious. And he asked the Jews and they told him what was written in their scriptures. And we need to peek out the door and have a look, if it's not a cloudy night, at this amazing sign in the heavens. So, um, perhaps this is the same star of all these years ago coming back again to tell us that Jesus is close to coming again to judge the world to take his people to himself so that all our hard work in the churches will have that reward promised in the scriptures that we'll be with Jesus and Jesus will be with us forever and ever, those of us who have been serving him. Join me again for part two of this message as we consider the state of the world and uh, how we can help our world uh, through Jesus Christ, the babe in the manger this Christmas. Thanks for listening.